guys, this is Grandma Cheap Cheap and welcome back to my vintage kitchen. In this episode, I'm just going to go over some simple basics of the water bath canning. I don't do any pressure canning, I just do uh, very simple canning, but I do love to cook and I love to can what I can and putting foods by. There's nothing more satisfying to me than seeing um, how beautiful food is in a beautifully canned situation. My first point would be determine where you're going to put your canned goods. It can be a, in a, uh, a closet um, it can, uh, that doesn't get real hot. You need to keep your canned goods in a cool, dry place. Um, you can buy shelving or put your shelf unit up, but determine a designated place for your canning so after you finish your project you can and everything is sealed and you hear that magic pop, you can just put it right there. It's no um, no thought press process that goes into it. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna uh, essential. Uh, for your water bath canning is your canner and everybody has seen these these are the basic big water bath canners I like these of course uh, because it's it's the original thing in water bath canning but sometimes they can get a little too big for my stove if I'm not canning a lot of product I also have uh, an enamel, yellow enamel one that's smaller. I like this for small products and for little projects. I also have, this is just a, a, a pot. It's heavy, um, a heavy pot and it's high enough that if I'm going to, let's say, can a half a pint of something it still will have enough room for me to bring the water level at least one to two inches over there so even though this isn't a designated can canner I can use it as a canner the second thing is get yourself some guidebooks this is the ball canning guide to preserving um, the ball seems to be the Bible book for canning and I picked this up at Walmart, um, Walmart or Kmart. So you can get it anywhere, any bookstore, I'm sure Barnes and Noble. And I got this one not long ago, maybe at the first of the summer. And this was at Lowe's. You know they have a lot of books at the checkout counter that um, is a reference guide to things that you maybe didn't even think about canning. So, you know, get yourself a couple of guidebooks. These are guide, and then you also have the internet. Uh, in a kit, you can find your essential tools for the water bath canning. And that is your funnel. This device, you uh, run around the inside of your product and get all the air bubbles out. Um, you can buy this, you can buy all of these separately. Um, you can also use that same, um, the same thing as this, you can use just a wooden spoon. Now, I like to use wooden spoons in my canning jars because I don't want to any risk that the the glass jars will crack or have a fracture in them. So uh, wooden spoons, this is the device that takes your hot jars out of the water and this is the magnetic um, device that you can pick up your um, bands or rims and your lids. So to keep them sterile and they'll be in the hot water as you bring that out. Also, have your 
have your towels and your uh, drying rack ready and handy. I have all mine. This I got, it's called a drying rack and I got it from the um, probably Walmart last year and it's very thick and soft and comfortable and for me to put my canning on. And I like to just put it up uh, on the shelf and as I said, listen to that magic pop. These I got from the Dollar Tree and they're also, um, this one is pretty, a uh, chevron. I love chevron print. But it reminded me of this drying mat. And I got a couple of these to put my canning on. Now, it's been a couple of months since I bought these, so they may not be in Dollar Tree anymore. But it's very inexpensive if you're canning on a budget. And who isn't? Um... Sometime a recipe will call for running your product through cheesecloth. I'm not into buying cheesecloth every time I need to. So I bought a half a yard of muslin or either Ornsberg. Um, I can wash it, use it over and over and over again. And that is the name. Uh, that's the name of the game is to um, save money, to put food by, um, not to buy things over and over again. So instead of cheesecloth, I would suggest that you get um, half a yard of muslin um, would probably be okay. Lastly, your canning jars are so important. They're important because even though you can buy them new uh, and you can get them at a department store, Walmart, you hear me talk about all the time because it's the closest store to me. Seven to ten dollars for a dozen and it does include the bands and the lids. This happens to be a little jar. But you can also get um, jars from uh, the Goodwill or secondhand stores. Um, just be careful that the jar isn't doesn't have a hairline fracture or a crack that you see that's visible or the um, collar of it. Please make sure that the collar isn't uh, doesn't have a chip in it. Um, for your hard work that you're doing for to can and put food by and it is a lot of time if you're buying the produce um, you know it's money that you spent buying it and if you're growing it in your garden it's the love that you put into watering those plants you don't want them to go bad the only thing that um, I suggest you don't use it's like old mayonnaise jars or old jars that have a, a top on it that you think it's going to reseal. Uh, I've seen a lot of product that my mom used to try to put up and when we go to eat it you know it had mold on it or something just because she was cheaping out and trying to reuse those jars for canning. Now those jars can be reused for something that you're going to put in the refrigerator, uh, a salad dressing or, or something like that. But in canning, pretty make sure that you're using a jar that will seal up properly. I hope this helps you. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, please leave them below. Thank you so much for joining me here in my vintage kitchen. This is Grandma Cheap Cheap saying goodbye now. Be blessed.